Today we'll be discussing the features of a Timsa TS35 motor coach. Today we'll start at the driver's area. We'll start at the left side of the dash and work our way around. There is no key on this coach, so you'd need to turn the ignition switch on Wait for the center cluster to tell you that the engine is okay to start. You must also remember in our new models that the aisle light switch has to be on as a safety precaution before the coach will start. And then you can hit the start switch. We have an emergency stop switch to the left of the ignition. Central locking switch allows you to unlock and lock the baggage bay doors from the driver's seat. It can also be done with a key outside. Heated mirrors. You can see it gives you an indicator on the dash. Water closet is your bathroom. It needs to be in the up position for the flush feature to work in the restroom. Steering control allows you to move the steering column wherever you like. When you have it where you want it, just hit the switch and it's locked in place. Anti-skid is always on. If you should need to turn it off, you can hit the switch here and it'll give you an indicator on the dash as well. We have a raise feature on the coach. In the up position, the whole coach will raise. Center is back to normal ride height. And then the coach will kneel the front for easier entry. This coach does have an engine brake. The M on the switch stands for motor. When it is on, you'll have a red light. There are three positions. The aggression level can be set with these three positions, low, middle, and high. We have a dimmer switch. It allows you to turn the dash brightness up or down. Your headlights or your running lights can be turned on with your low beam clearance switch. In the center position, it's just clearance lights and it'll give you an indicator on the dash. Up, turns your headlights on. And then beside that, you'll have a fog light button. It'll also give you an indicator on the dash. We have a mirror control. To the left, allows you to adjust the mirrors up or down. We have two 12 volt plugs for charging. Your Allison keypad. Your emergency park brake. We also have a height reading here, which is 11.8, which is 11.8 in the raised position. This coach has 110 volt plugs. If your coach has that installed, the switch is over on the left and it does have to be turned on for those to work. Your wand on your steering column allows you to turn your brights on. This is your left and your right blinkers. Your windshield wipers your windshield wiper fluid, and your horn. The driver's central information center is located in the center of the dash. You have your miles per hour, odometer, your fuel gauge, RPMs, engine temperature, and in the center you have a DEF percent, air tank PSI reading, and any information you need about the coach, it will give you messages here. In your message center here, you will get indications if something is wrong with the coach indicated by an envelope in the bottom left hand corner and exclamation point. To find out what the message is, push the button below it and hold and it will give you the message. You can see indicated by the envelope with the green check mark that nothing is wrong with the coach at this time. This top row will give you indications such as parking brake, bright lights are on, and the red light is telling me the engine is turned off. Moving to the right side of the dash, we have aisle light, which you remember has to be turned on for the coach to start. This turns on a blue light in the rear of the coach. You have a driver light switch, which just turns on a light above the driver. Interior light has two positions. In the center position is a lower level white light and in an up position is brighter. 
We have reading lights that you can put in a middle position that turns the reading lights on dim or in an up position turns them all on bright. Then the passengers can turn them off individually. Your cruise control switch is here. When you turn it on, your lights will turn red. Remember that this won't work if your engine brake is left on. So if you want to set the cruise while you're going down the road, your engine brake switch needs to be turned off. This also sets your high idle. If you try to set high idle and your air conditioner is engaged, it's already in high idle and you won't hear it increase. If it's not, push the up button and the idle will increase. This also will set your speed on cruise control. To coast, simply hit the down button. Below these switches is your air conditioner controls for your coach. In this area is your control for your driver. In this area is the control for the passengers. This is your recirculate button, your fan speed knob, your position of your blower all the way to the left is on the dash or at your feet. All the way to the right is defrost. This is your temperature setting. You can adjust it up or down here. In this box is the passenger air conditioning the snowflake indicator indicates that your air conditioning is on. The center button at the top of your AC control head can be used to dehumidify your coach without disengaging your AC clutch. Recirculate button, fan speed, to adjust the fan speed for the passengers, simply push the button, then you can go up or down. Temperature setting is the same. Simply push the button and you can go up or down. Below 64.3 turns the air conditioner off. If your coach is equipped with a preheater, this button turns it on or off. And this button allows you to set the timer. This is your REI video control head. To turn the system on, simply push the blue power button. To adjust the driver volume, turn up or down here where it says driver. Your passenger volume is on the left hand side. To select DVD player or radio for your passenger is here. To play the DVD is here and to rewind and fast forward. Your front door switch opens and closes the entrance door. You have automatic blinds here which can raise or lower your blinds for your driver. And your hazard switch here. To utilize your intercom microphone, all you need to do is have the REI control head on then simply turn the microphone in the on position and it's working. Your secondary microphone is located here to the left of the driver. For technical support, there's a phone number located on the sticker on the driver's side window. The Timsa TS35 is equipped with the top of the line Isringhausen driver seat. In the down position, there is no air going to the seat. In the up position, it activates the seat controls. The second switch allows more bounce to the seat in the up position or more stable in the down position. You also have a height control here with nine positions. All the way down is low or you can raise it as high as you need to. Then you have your lumbar supports here. The driver's seat has three-point seat belt, which will give you a warning buzzer should it not be plugged in and you're driving. Have adjustable armrests that can fold up or down and can be controlled with the knob here to lower or raise the armrest. The reclining feature of the driver's seat is located on the left-hand side. 
the DVD player is located in the overhead compartment behind the driver. Timsa motor coaches are equipped with three-point seat belts for the passengers, armrests, and recline. Passenger overhead controls can turn your lights on or off and control your vents. You can turn them on or off by turning the ring around the vent. The fire extinguisher is located on the passenger side underneath the front seat. If your coach was delivered with a first aid kit, it will be located on the passenger side overhead parcel rack towards the front of the coach. Above the entrance door, you will see a knob that allows you to release the air to the entrance door in an emergency. Your roof mounted emergency exit is located in the rear of the coach. Instructions are located on the bottom of the lid. One, push the lid up. Two, pull the white knob. Three, push the lid out. To close the emergency exit, follow the instructions on the bottom of the lid. To close, one, place the lid back in the slot. Two, pull the white knob to latch. And three, pull the lid down. To open your side window emergency exits, pull the red levers push the window out. We're going to start on the outside of the vehicle at the entrance door. To open the entrance door, simply push the button. To close it, push the button again. To lock the entrance door, turn the knob back. You can also lock it with your key so that the knob cannot be turned at all. And to reactivate it, turn the knob back forward. This is your fuel door which can be locked or unlocked. To open your fill lid, push this lever back. And to close it, just push the lid forward. The capacity of your fuel tank is located here on the inside of the door. There is also an emergency air release for the entrance door located just inside. The baggage bays can be locked and unlocked individually with a key. The wheel well fenders fold up and out of the way for easier access with the removal of four bolts. One here. One here. And there were two more here that I've already removed. This folds up out of the way with the kickstand. This is your DEF compartment door. You can open this door to fill or you can open the entire door for easier access. Simply pull and then reach in for a safety latch. And you can open the whole door. Your DEF tank is 10 gallons. Manual regen switch is located in this compartment as well. Only use this switch if a CH bus sales technician tells you to. On the passenger side of the coach at the rear, is the compartment for the regeneration and your restroom dump valve and fill. This is your Cummins regeneration equipment, which can be very hot, so be careful when you're in this compartment. This is your restroom dump valve. Simply pull this lever down, we'll empty the restroom to fill with water. Hook up your water hose here, open your valve. Now we're going to talk about the engine compartment. Your batteries are dead and you need to jump your coach off. Do it from the engine compartment on the passenger side. Your ground is here and your hot is here. Your rear engine controls are located on the passenger side in the engine compartment. When you're in the engine compartment, be sure and have the emergency stop pushed. To release it, turn in the direction of the arrows. Light switch on, off, and your engine start is here. This is your power steering reservoir, a dipstick to check fluid level, and your fill lid. Engine oil fill is located here on top of the engine. 
Your engine oil level can be checked here with the dipstick. Your antifreeze tank is located here and your sight glass. The driver's side, the rear of the coach, is your radiator compartment. The driver's side, behind the drive tires, is your preheater compartment. This coach is not equipped with a preheater. If it was, this is where it would be located. If a technician asked you to turn on or off water valves, this is where you would do that. Battery compartment is located on the driver's side behind the steer tire. For access to the batteries, pull these two pins and the battery tray slides out. If your company requires that you turn your batteries off at night, this is your switch. If you need to check or reset relays, they're located here. There's a compartment located underneath the driver that has a bumper release, tools, and reflectors. Located in this compartment is your bumper release, windshield wiper fluid, spare water tank, reflectors, a jack, chalk, and tool kit. Your spare tire is located in this compartment in the bumper, and on each side are rails that can assist you in getting the tire out. For access to your headlights, turn these thumb screws and open this compartment.